What's up? My name is Mike Yakovlev, and last week I showed you how I made this cyberpunk cityscape, and I kind of walked you through how to do it. I had a lot of questions about, well, how do you make the buildings? Because in that video, I showed uh, that I clearly used an, an asset pack that I bought. I think it is fair to at least show if you don't want to buy the asset pack, or if you just want to have your own building assets, you know, how to do that, how to make those. We're going to go through like a short process of me making just like one building. I've made a couple already. And I'll have a full length video if you want to watch like a full hour of me modeling these things I'll have it in the link in the description or you can go watch that You know what I'm saying? So firstly what I did was I kind of went and separated all like the little Greebly bits from the actual main building structure so that you can see it's once we t turn off like Oh blender crashed <laughs> But just for like demonstration purposes, let's look at this building and it looks kind of complicated. It looks like it has a lot of stuff on it, and it does. It has a bunch of, you know, crap up top. It has a bunch of things on the side, like billboards and wires and all this kind of stuff. That's definitely intimidating if you're looking to, like, model one of these on your own. But if we turn off all of this extra stuff, you can see that the base, like, structure is pretty simple. You know, it's just like a long rectangle, windows and then just a bit of variety on either side or whatever. But even these buildings for me are a little bit too like, they have like too much character, especially for the scene that I was trying to recreate, which was inspired by, like I said in the past, like this Akita scene where the buildings are very straightforward. They're almost like, they're, they're just like modern day skyscraper buildings. They're not even like something like this. So we don't even, we don't even need to go this far. I mean, you can, I'll show you how to get this far. And then all of this other stuff, I mean, if you really look at it, it's just like, it's just planes, it's more details, it's little grids and things like that. And, um, you know, cables, all those little things that you can just take your time on slowly putting on top of the building to give it more uh, detail. But I think that for our purposes, like I said, we really only need this building. We really only need like this part. We only really need that part. So... Let's uh, let's go and let's go do that. So we can kind of see in this shot specifically what kind of detail we need. Like we need windows, we need uh, separations between the windows and the floors and stuff, and then some kind of tall like big cube thing, like just all along the edges. I don't know buildings. I'm not an architect, so forgive my uh, <laughs> um, my ignorance and what are all these parts called. And then I have some images here of like just screenshots I took to give us an idea. So you can see that like the buildings are super, super basic. And it really is just about like the atmosphere and the vibe and like the color palette and not really like the buildings are not necessarily supposed to take your attention away. It's just supposed to feel like, I assume this is what I took away from it. It's just supposed to feel like intimidating and brooding and like this massive uh, concrete jungle in a sense. And then some of these extra shots of the neon signs I think are cool. Would be fun to remake them or to kind of make scenes similar to them in the future. Especially this one, like just this grid of windows in the background and then uh, this one glowing kind of image. And this one's cool too. Um, let's make something like this. I think this would be cool with like the little thing on the side. Shift A, go to a plane, tab in edit mode, scale up. I'm just, I'm not really paying attention to scale. Uh, you can later on scale it big as hell or whatever you want. Um, but I think as long as we kind of get the proportions right, we'll be all right. So I'm going to X screwed up control r in edit mode will give you a loop cut add one this one add one this way alt click to select the whole loop and then alt shift click to select another whole loop control b to bevel and then kind of get it like that and then this is really just giving us the faces of where we want to put our windows there's this the buildings the windows don't go to the very edge of the building there's all this like bumper and stuff at the end click on ease shift click might add another loop in the middle just to kind of like give it a roof thing because they also don't go to the very top or to the very bottom. There's like, at the very bottom especially, there's more space on the bottom of a building than you would think because of like, it's sometimes like a hotel lobby or like a kiosk or whatever. There's like shops and stuff down there sometimes or restaurants. So you want to give it like a good amount of space for doors and windows and all these other things. I spent like an hour or two hours just making these buildings before recording this video so that I knew that like it wasn't going to be a waste of your time uh, or my time. So, um, Again, if you really want to see like me just figuring out how to make buildings and make like two or three of them, 
I'll have that full video for you to watch. Is I might have to do a full uh, one of these. And so we did that. So now that way they're all square, we can just kind of if you just click and drag, it should box select all of it. So I'm holding shift and box selecting all of this stuff. So shift just allows you, holding shift while clicking something just allows you to select more of it. So now that we have these squares, I think we do another right click subdivide, subdivide. Because what we're going to do is we're going to press I two times to inset like that. And then I'm going to scale on the Z axis. So it scales them like all from the middle. But if we go up here and click on individual origins, we'll be able to scale on the Z axis individually like that. So I'm just trying to create like enough separation like that. To extrude inwards for the windows, I'm going to hit, I guess you could just hit E and then like move it around like that. But just to be safe, I press Alt E and this brings up an extra extrude um, window, extrude along normals. And then that just makes it go, I guess, just back directly. All right. So we're like kind of halfway there. I'm just going to add like these little extensions and stuff and the little like beams here in the middle so you can see these like extra additional like beams that are coming down between the walls between the offices what i'm going to do is i'm just going to borrow one of these uh, actually i'm going to borrow one of these instead okay and then we press alt e to extrude along normals and that just kind of extrudes it out like that it's a little uneven you can see it looks weird uh, and then you just click here even offset offset even and it'll make it straight if we do that, it looks kind of cool. I might, I, might, I might ignore the step thing and just do um, like that on the front. So just control R and then scroll up on the scroll wheel. If you don't have a mouse that has a scroll wheel and you're using Blender, um, you're giving, you're making it way harder on yourself. So I'm gonna control B to bevel to kind of separate it like that. I'm gonna take these bottom faces as well. Nice. Um, I think I wanna bevel it just a little bit more. I will say one thing, don't ever, stress over the fact that you might be doing something the slow way. Like I always worry that I'm modeling things the slow way or using Blender the slow way or the dumb way or the inefficient way or whatever, because there's always like more some more efficient way of doing something. Like, you know, for example, modifiers. You know, a lot of times, like I'll look at artists that are doing really well, like in 3D or 2D or whatever, and wonder like, man, how are they, doing all this work so well like they must be they must know some secrets and some tricks that i don't know usually that's not the case usually they're just putting in the hard work the tedious work that maybe you don't want to do or that most people don't want to do or aren't willing to do so if you ever think like man i'm doing this like just judging yourself and kind of like keeping yourself from making progress by wondering if there's a faster way to do it um you know, if you get stuck in that rut, just just do it the hard way, do it the long way. Like you'll at least get it done and you can move on from there. Like I feel like sometimes when I think about I spend more time thinking about the fast way of doing something rather than just doing it the hard way. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, so I'll grab these edges, control B to bevel. And I feel like gives it a little bit of a, a little accent there. Just kind of extrude that. Um, extrude down. We're almost done for at least the part that we need. Uh, I'm just going to add like this, take this little beam here and then shift D to duplicate on the Y and click Y and it'll just move it on the Y axis only. And we're going to put this uh, in the front. And this is like a tedious bit, but I think it will definitely add more um, just like structural noise to the building and make it look more complicated. Okay. So I have this, uh, I have this really cool add on called Polyhaven and Polyhaven is a website that you can go and you download assets and textures and everything like that for free. You don't have to pay for them, but they also sell an add on that like puts all of that stuff at your, like within reach and in, in, into your computer. Essentially you basically have Polyhaven inside of the, inside of blender. So, uh, but the add-on you do have to buy it's not free but you can you know like every time they add new assets so it says fetch 37 new assets you can go here and whatever new assets they uploaded to the store to their website that is not automatically downloaded here you can go and you can select you know download all of them or just the H just the new hdris or just the new textures whatever 
but so we're and and they come like pre-organized like this as well so it, it's it's great let's do like gray plaster on the building oh because we've been just having fun and going crazy with the modeling the uvs are not perfect so let's go ahead and fix that <coughs> um a u smart uv project that kind of does what we need so that's good uh the other thing about this asset uh th this add-on that i like the polyhaven add-on in the material settings it gives you this little drop down the best part i think the, the part that the add-on is worth is you can go here and you can download uh, by default it gives you 1k but you can download like 2k 4k 8k sometimes 16k uh, so let's do 2k and it'll download and it'll upload automatically on the thing we don't have to reconnect anything like that looks like it's already downloaded let me get the Set my coffee, my coffee. Just trying to think like, okay, so we can keep all of this concrete and then maybe this edge will make it like a dark metal or something. Again, pressing seven on the numpad to go to the top view, going to x-ray mode so that I can see all of the, uh, like all of the pieces and then going into face select. Like the dots are where the face is. So as long as you're selecting over the dot, if you're not selecting the dot, like if you're kind of selecting here, you're not gonna select the face. But if you select over the dot, you select the faces and there's faces on the edges too and i think these are we want to select these as well okay i think we got everything we need the green metal we'll take that so the green metal is good it just needs to be uh, scaled up some so let's do like maybe 10. we really just only want like the the kind of like imperfection part of it like that i think i think that looks okay i'm gonna might tweak it a little bit so i'm gonna add a color ramp over the roughness to kind of Crush some of the values a bit to see if they, yeah, it looks cool. I think for the glass, you really only need like a glossy and a transparent maybe. So what I want to do also is I want to go through and give like emissive textures to all of these. Because one thing I really liked about the reference was that there, it looks like it's kind of glowing. And I think, I'm pretty sure it's just windows. Like I'm pretty sure, I, it looked like it was just glowing with light, but I'm pretty sure they're just like windows and those are balconies or something. You know, we could do that. We could do it that way. But I, I like our version where it feels like it's some kind of, you know, just an, a, like a like a light accent. So if we go into x-ray mode and then select all of the faces again like that. So it's only selecting the faces. Inset a little. Kind of make it go inside. And we make it just like an emission. I think that's going to look really cool. Yeah, it looks sick. Insane damn that looks insane the volume and the volume is just a cheat it always makes everything look good so let's do that last part which is gonna bring an image in and i've shown this in the last two videos but just do it again here for clarity and really we're just gonna cut out this part might even cut out some of these other ones too delete the faces and then by default the alpha is plugged into the alpha i'm gonna take the color and plug it into the alpha so then we get rid of all that. It's just changing the color a little bit of the windows. Uh, and that thing looks cool. So we're going to use this. And going to stick it like right behind that glass right there. You know, up close. You know, not doesn't really sell. But from a distance, you know, this looks like stuff going on in there. What's going on in there? Hey, what's going on in there? Okay. So if you kind of turn off the uh, transparency, it kind of works out. And I think plane is just sitting like right in front of that glass. It's just sitting right in front of it like that. It does like fake dimensionality, like it duplicates it. So it looks like it kind of goes back a little. Kind of cool. Like maybe I kind of like that effect, honestly. It's a happy accent, but I'll take it. Ooh, it looks awesome. But I think that's that's really it. Uh, again, if you want to watch the full hour and a half of me just struggling through making some of the other buildings, you can watch that. And uh, other buildings that I modeled, including this one, uh, you can download for free on the Patreon. Other than that, thank you for a thousand subscribers. Like we recently re uh, reached that. That's insane. It's cool. I'm really happy about that. I've tried doing YouTube and videos and things like that before and just somehow never got into the swing of it. Never felt inspired and never felt like it was paying off. You know, there's a really small community of people that watch my videos right now. And I, I, I know you, like I pay attention to you. I see you. Thank you for watching this video and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.